This episode is brought to you by Hebe Health. Welcome to a world where managing your child's care is simplified and supportive. Introducing Hebe, the app designed to help families navigate the complexities of caring for a child with additional needs. As a father of three autistic children, I understand the challenges parents face in coordinating care. That's why I'm excited to share Hebe with you today. Created by families for families, Hebe provides essential tools to manage, store, and share your child's care information. It brings together health, education, and social care into one easy-to-use platform, reducing the overwhelm and isolation often felt by families. With Hebe, you get personalized guidance and care management tools, helping you track and share vital information with your care team. The collaborative nature of the app allows you to invite family, friends, and professionals, ensuring everyone's on the same page. The journey to develop Hebe involved dozens of workshops and interviews with hundreds of families. This co-design approach ensures that the app truly meets the needs of families like yours. Join the Hebe community today. Together, let's empower our journey in caring for our children. Remember that you're not alone. Hebe is here to help you every step of the way. You can download and try the app for free on both Android and iOS. For more information, visit Hebe.health. That's H-I-B-I dot health. This episode is brought to you by AC Autism. Welcome to a world where every serve and volley opens up a universe of possibilities for children on the autism spectrum. This is AC Autism a place where kids aged 5 to 18 can thrive through the power and joy of tennis. At AC Autism, we believe in nurturing growth, fostering social connections, and enhancing physical fitness. Our affordable tennis programs are tailored to each child's unique needs with one-on-one -on -one support from dedicated volunteer buddies. If your child needs extra care, we're ready with additional support, be it another volunteer, a parent, or a BCBA specialist right there on the court. Join us for our fun-filled weekend sessions that run for six to eight weeks. Each session is a step towards confidence, skill, and a vibrant social life for your child. Worried about costs? AC Autism offers scholarships because we believe every child should have a chance to shine. And remember, age is just a number. We're here for your child, your teenager, and upon request, we extend our love for the game beyond 18. AC Autism isn't just about tennis. It's about setting the stage for a brighter, more confident future. For more information, visit acingautism.org, that's A-C-E-I-N-G-A-U-T-I-S-M.org to learn more about scholarships and find a location near you. Serve up some joy, enroll your child today, and let's ace autism together. Welcome to the Autism Dad Podcast. I'm Rob Gorski. As a single dad to three amazing autistic kids, I've been the go-to resource for parents across the globe navigating neurodivergence since 2010. Building on the success of my award-winning blog, The Autism Dad, this podcast provides parents raising autistic or neurodivergent kids with comfort, community, resources, and validation. You'll also hear inspiring stories from parents just like you, reminding you that you're not alone. So don't miss out. New episodes drop every Monday and Wednesday. Subscribe on your favorite podcast listening app and visit theautismdad.com for more information. On this week's episode of the Autism Dad podcast, we are going to start the process of closing out season six. And I'm going to do this in a way that I've not done before. And that is by doing sort of like end of the year reviews or sort of exit interviews with my kids. I'm going to do each individually. So they're each going to have their own episode. And then I'm going to end the season with a conversation with Kelly and I. So what we're going to do today is you're going to hear an interview that I did with my 23-year-old autistic son, Gavin. And the idea behind this was just to talk about what he's accomplished this year, like how he feels about all these changes in his life and what he's looking forward to or what his plans are for 2024. However, when we started talking about this, he, he really opened up about how he has struggled emotionally with his life, having to deal with all of the health issues and and things like that. And it goes to kind of a, he, he talks about some of the darker thoughts that he's experienced uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of learning about for the first time. And we talk a little bit about that, but, you know, we also talk about a lot of the very positive things that he's done and, and where he is and how much progress he's made. The reason that he's sharing this is because he's just honest <laughs> and it was important to him that people heard this. And so, you know, we're keeping all of this stuff in. Uh, and then we talk about uh, what he wants to do in 2024, like what his goals are. And he drops a bomb uh, about his goals in 2024 that I had no idea he was even thinking about. And I, uh, I was really caught off guard. And I, but I'm like super excited for him that he's even thinking about stuff like this in his life. So I appreciate you guys taking the time to tune in. Thank you so much for being here. And I hope you enjoy this interview as much as I enjoyed recording it. 
Here we go. So we're back and Gavin, my 23 year old autistic son is here. Uh, he's been on a show before and you guys loved hearing his insights. That felt like for me, like I was at a therapy session uh, because he's very wise and has a lot of really unique insights on things that I think are very helpful, not only to me as a person and a dad, but to all of you out there who are trying to raise kids uh, who are on the spectrum. So here we go. This is what we're gonna do today. It's end of the year. Right. Mm -hmm. And we are going to talk a little bit about some of the amazing things that you have accomplished this year. Mm -hmm. And then I want to ask you some questions about what your dreams and hopes are for 2024. Does that sound cool? That sounds cool. Okay. So let's start things off with just, how are you doing, man? I'm doing good. I feel like I never see you anymore. Yeah. Well, uh, it comes with the territory when you're working three days of the week and then going to for the other two days. Yeah. So you're in day services during mm -hmm. the day on the days you're not working and yeah. you're a working man. Mm -hmm. You are a working man. And I want to point out too, that you are managing a hundred percent of this stuff on your own. Yeah. I don't wake you up. I don't remind you of your schedule. You just manage your own life. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing that I still have to do is I schedule your doctor's appointments. Yeah. I drive you to that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I order your refills for your infusion meds, your IVIG stuff. Yes. And, but I think we need to start, we need to put that on our list for 2024. Oh, oh you yes. Need to Most start, definitely. You need Most to start definitely. getting you to do that on your own. So that yeah. you're completely independent there. Most definitely. So let, let's just, let's start with this. What, what are the two biggest accomplishments you think that you have experienced in the year 2023 what are you most proud of what i am most proud of uh first off one of the biggest things i'm most proud of is well one of them has already happened the other one hasn't happened yet but i'm really excited about that okay is managing to contribute to thanksgiving and christmas without everyone having to buy the things I'm going to be using to make, to contribute to Thanksgiving or Christmas. Are you talking about, oh, you're talking about like for Thanksgiving, you baked that, that cake? That, that ombre, brownie cake? Yeah, that ombre brownie cake. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this year I'm going to be making, uh, well, I'm going to be making two things. A cheesecake for my, for our family get together that's going to be coming up on the 23rd. Okay. And one thing I like how you caught yourself and you're not using names because yeah. you don't want to use names. Yeah, I yeah. know. And another thing I'm going to be making, I haven't figured it out, out yet, but I'm going to be making it this week on Wednesday for a Christmas party. Oh, for work. For work. Nice. Uh, I forgot about that. They're going to, it's uh, Neapolitan cupcakes. Basically, nice. it's just vanilla cupcakes with milk, milk chocolate chips in them and strawberry frosting on top. And I'm going to be making them on Wednesday afternoon after I get home from Excel. And I'm going to be taking them to work. And I'm going to be seeing how they do, like mm. how they taste, if they taste as good as they sound, because they sound like they would taste really good. Yeah. And if they do taste as good as they sound, I'm going to be making those for uh, Christmas dinner this year. Yeah. And so let's, let's, let's expand on this just a little bit. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons you're so proud of this is yeah. because you're doing this entirely on your own. Mm -hmm. You're shopping for this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're, you're at the store by yourself. Yes. You're timing it so that you're doing it on days that you work mm -hmm. so that you can, when you're done with work, you shop and then you're, you got your ride home. Yeah. You're using your own money, your own credit card. Yeah. And you're putting all this stuff together all on your own. Yes. That's amazing. I know. That's got to feel so good. It, it does feel so good. It, it, it feels so good. And like these last few months, like for most of this year, I've just felt so alive, more alive than I've ever felt in, this la in these last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Cause while I was still alive and breathing, I just felt dead inside. I felt like my life just had zero meaning. Yeah. And it was just, 
day in and day out, just copy and paste, copy and paste. And, and well, it was it was rough for you for a long time because you had a lot of very serious health issues, mm -hmm. and COVID for a couple of years was really limiting because of those health issues. Yeah, and you know, you, you, you were pulled out of high school because of your health. And we've talked about that a lot, mm -hmm. uh, because you just, you weren't going to make it. Yeah. So we had to do that, but that doing what was best to sort of preserve your life and keep you safe mm -hmm. and healthy had a very real devastating impact on you emotionally that I don't, it, it wasn't just emotionally. It was mentally, it was physically like I had, zero drive to do yeah pretty much anything i didn't want well i didn't want to go on walks with you in the morning because you did that for a while yeah uh, i didn't want i didn't want to do anything outside because you were, it was you were depressed i was depressed and yeah. just doing anything outside was just it was suffocating so so now yes you are doing something five days a week mm -hmm. nice you're making money Yes. You're buying things for yourself. You're going your own, doing your own grocery shopping. This you're is, almost exclusively like providing for yourself. Uh, yeah. Sh some shopping sessions are better than others. Uh, mm -hmm. like there there can be complications at times. And to be perfectly honest, a lot of the time, a lot of my shopping sessions, it's just me kind of winging it. Not having like a list and not having not the list. Yeah. I do make the list as I'm working, uh, but I do forget a few items on the list, so I have to get them like the next time I'm over there. Do you know what else you do though? Like today, we're in the kitchen, and he asked me. He said that he's going to be shopping for himself on Tuesday. If there's anything that I need for me to let him know, and he'll get it for me. And so mm -hmm. he's gonna he's gonna buy me some blueberries, and I think you were gonna pick up trash bags or something. Yeah, blueberries and trash bags. Which uh, is really helpful. It's very uh, nice of you. Yeah, well, you're working almost 90% of the time. Uh, and so you're unable to do grocery shopping more, more often than not because you're working. Well, I just I just order the stuff. Yeah, you just order the stuff. But like, it, it also pays just like I work. It also pays because I'm. I work at a grocery shop. Yeah, grocery you're store. you're already there, and and you're just trying to help out. I'm trying to help out. Yeah, you know, and I appreciate that. I'm very proud of you. Uh, so thank you for that. I wanted to point that stuff out. So the big accomplishments for this year is you got a job. I have a job. That was that for me in my eyes. That's the that's a big one. And oh, you started day service. Oh yes, that was a huge, huge thing for me. Because I'm gonna be perfectly honest. Uh, Are you I, never not honest? Well, I, I, I am. You're never not honest. Uh, well, I'm. I just, I love how you say I'm going to be perfectly honest because you're not yeah. capable of lying. So it's, uh, it's oh, funny. I, I, so why unintentionally, my ad, because uh, I kind of misremember something. That's not lying, though. Well, it, to me, it's to me, it's sort of lying, but not completely oh, lying. Oh, it's not fact. It, it's not like yeah. it's not the whole truth, but it's not like the whole lie. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Um. But back back to the point, I'm I was not expecting going into my first potential job interview mm -hmm. because this is a potential job and it was an interview. This is something that I could this is a job I could potentially gotten. I did not expect my myself to get the job on my first interview. I know I, I that and that came that was the that just caught me off guard, like. Cause I, cause how did it make you feel? Surprised, shocked, uh, proud. I couldn't feel proud in the moment because I was just, I didn't know what to feel. What about now? I, I do feel proud. Good, but like in the moment, I've come to expect life to just mess with me and screw me over at some point or another because in my eyes life has been, life has been screwing me over uh all my life one way or another you've had a rough life, but you never complain about it i know i try not to complain about it. i try to have a somewhat positive outlook on life 
you have a disgustingly positive outlook on life sometimes, Gavin. <laughs> We're like, oh my God, Gavin. Oh, <laughs> just be a little negative today. <laughs> I. Well, this doesn't involve with being a little negative. Like, because if you have just a 100% positive outlook on life every single day, it almost feels like you're trying to hide the negatives. Yeah. And so it can always be refreshing to just feel a little negative. Well, every now it, and then. It, it, be real. Be real. Right. Yeah. Because life is an ebb and flow of good and bad times, right? And it's okay to experience the bad times because they make the good times even better. Yeah. Yeah, but I was more referring to like, yeah, I said the life screws me over one mm -hmm. way or another. And that could be so often, like it could seem far and in between, but to me it felt like it was happening so often mm, gotcha. that the good times were just so little. Okay. Like I refer to the day I was pulled out of high school and today I refer to it as like the infamous decade mm. because it was the worst 10 years of my entire life. And for me, that felt like life was basically giving me the metaphorical mill finger to end <laughs> all mill fingers. Okay. It was just rough. It was horrible. And you can't make me laugh because I'm going to cough. I'm still getting over being sick. And, and I've been saying this a lot lately. And this is actually the truth. Like, okay. If I had spent ten more, uh, two more years, two more years in this house with experience in the same copy and paste days, and you have all of this now, I would have just ended my life altogether. Okay. But like, I, but I'm listening. It's just, it's not living when you have to deal with this kind of stuff. And I know this is not some you really should talk about publicly as well publicly or at all because you never know who may be dealing with the kind of stuff I had to deal with. Well can I can I can I inject something really mm -hmm. quick because I think it's important. Yeah. I I didn't realize well I didn't realize the impact that this was having on you, the extent of the impact this yeah. was having on you uh, at first. And and it was really tough to kind of manage some of this stuff because I I was sort of split in so many different directions. Mm -hmm. And because you never complain about anything, it was it was easy to sometimes forget that you were going through something because you were always so agreeable. You were always so happy. It was, but you were miserable on the inside. It was a lot of that was because I could see you were stressed yeah. way beyond your limits. And with you having to deal with managing your business and trying to keep the house afloat, trying to keep us in the house, the la if, and this was my, this is my fault. This is my fault. This is more of my own fault. I should have been more open, but I just, the last thing I wanted to do was burden you yeah, I with know. my problems, with everything you were having to deal with already. And but, I, I, I should have been more open to you. Well, would that have been helpful? It would have been helpful, but I also should have, I, I should have recognized this sooner than what I did. Yeah. And but you also made a comment too that if you had to do this for more than, you know, another two years or whatever, like if you had, had to continue this, yes. if things hadn't changed, you okay, when you say you would just end your life, are you are you like you're not serious are you seriously? I, I, we've not I, talked I'm, about that before. I'm serious. Like I am serious. Like So you were having those kinds of thoughts? Not often, but like to the point where it was concerning every now and then. Did you, did and you, it was just, it was a tough time. It was a tough time. How, how can you, how can you call 
being stuck under the roof with every day feeling like it's just the same old godforsaken day. It's like Groundhog's Day. Did you ever see that movie? Oh, oh no, but I, I know of it. It and just the same day repeats over and over and over again. That that's basically that's basically the infamous decade. Do you remember like that episode of Stargate where they got t- stuck in that yeah, time loop and yeah, it was the I, same thing every oh day? Oh my god, like <laughs> I but like it it was driving me mental. Yeah. And like yes, I did put up a face, but you know how I would every now and then throughout the decade I would constantly have these outbursts of raw anger mm-hmm. that was pretty much all of the anger built up over a certain period of time yeah just coming out all at once and it's just like it's a hair trigger yeah I but, I you made another comment about talking about what you were feeling or what you were thinking when you mentioned ending your life Mm-hmm. is not something that you should be talking about publicly i i want to i want to just i want to say two things one well three things one i'm so sorry that things went down the way that they did and i i wish that i had better managed some of these things because i I it, uh, like I I can tell you that I did my best, <laughs> but obviously my best wasn't good enough. You, and that and and I don't mean that as like a I, a, I a, a, a a put down on myself. I, so I, I don't need you to like defend me. I know. Me. I know. Well, let, let me finish what I'm saying. Okay. I there's only so much one person can do, mm-hmm. and whether it was you or your other brothers, somebody was always ha- having a need back burnered. And I think because you were not a squeaky wheel, you were not complaining about things very often. It was it was easier for me to sort of forget that you were struggling with those things because it was sort of, it, it wasn't in my face all the time. And, and I should have been more aware. I should have been more cognizant of the fact that you were, you were very much focused on trying to make things easier for me because and you've always been that way ever since I became since it since it's been you me and your brothers you have gone out of your way every day to try and make life as manageable and and be as helpful to me as you possibly can well it gave it gave me something to do and like look I, I and look I I don't like I didn't like that I played video games as often as I did. It was an escape. It was an escape because, yeah. like, it it was it was it was suffocating. Life was just complete and utter suffocating. Yeah. And it was an escape for me. It was because I'd rather take my anger out on the games than take it out on my family. That, that makes you know in hindsight all of that makes so much more sense now that we're talking about this i i well so the other thing that i wanted to say to you was it takes a tremendous amount of courage to admit that you you were having feelings like that and you were doing therapy which was good mm-hmm. that was an outlet for you and more recently you have become more vocal about what you're feeling and what you need and you stand up for yourself and if i forget something you remind me you know and 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 i think we sort of found something that that works yeah where i'm hoping that you feel more like um you're getting like your needs met more now than what you were before as life is sort of balanced out for us i do feel that i do okay. feel that but it's one of the reasons why in like one of the big reasons why i don't like looking back on the infamous decade is because it was such a lonely time for me yeah i had to deal with jealousy with my younger brothers who was still going to school still hanging out with their friends yeah oh boy was i jealous but yeah i I really I also didn't want 
get angry at them because of it. You were happy for them. I, I was happy for them, but at the same time, yeah, I was so envious. Mm -hmm. I was so envious because because I didn't have that connection, those connections that that they did that they did. Yeah, and then whenever we were at family gatherings, uh, and everyone asked how I was doing, I just kept replying with same old, same old. I had literally. You Nothing did. Nothing to talk about. You did. I thought I, that was just. No. Yeah. You, I got you now. No. Like, I, I had nothing to talk about. There was nothing new. Like, because, like, what was there new? Like, it was. I experienced the same freaking day every single day for the yeah. last decade. Like, sure, we had the occasional uh, family vacation. Like, we. Like, when we went down to Florida, when we volunteered for, like, Give Kids the World. Yeah. And back in 2020, and we went to see a Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Uh, so in we Orlando. had some like that. Um, but for the most part, what was there to talk about? Like, yeah. It, it, it was a boring, lonely, and just a time where all my negative emotions were just ravaging my mind. My subconscious, my my it was emotions. Affecting, it was affecting every part of your life. Yeah. Okay. And it, well, and I I appreciate you sharing this. I mean, I hadn't intended on doing yeah, this, but no, I also no. I also think that it's helpful to have this conversation mm -hmm. because there's a lot of other people who are experiencing similar things, mm -hmm. and I think you talking about what you are going through might help somebody else's parents mm -hmm. to understand what their kids are going through, or might help someone who's listening find the courage to speak up. Mm -hmm. And and whether you're talking about hurting yourself no. or or anything like mm -hmm. that. And and that's better, right? Like we're not Yeah. That's we're not dealing with anything like that anymore. No. Those are not secrets that we keep. No. I mean, do you understand that? Yeah. When you feel that way, I need to know about it. Yes. Whether you want me to know or not, we have to we have to be honest about those yes. things. Yes. Um and look, I, I didn't encounter on this, us talking about this either. It's it's more like we just kind of fell oh, into we it. We fell into it. And which, there's nothing wrong with that. No. I Well, it's some of the, the most interesting conversations that we have, I think, have just sort of been unplanned. <laughs> so <laughs> The unplanned ones. The unplanned ones. So, so let's summarize that part of it up. Yeah. This year has been a reprieve from the last 10 years of struggle. Yes. And and you find yourself happier than what you've ever remember being. Yes. That's a good thing. That is such a good thing. Yeah, it is. And like, and like when we were talking about the infamous decade, I'm just going to refer to it as the infamous decade because sure. that's what it was. Sure. Me. I felt my heart sank because remembering times remembering those times is not a pleasant one for me no it, it was it was so unpleasant like because it was the 10 years that i had little to no control of my emotions it was just like a hair trigger mm -hmm. like one moment i was happy the next moment i was just like Rawr. Yeah, it was just like the tiniest. You would hulk out every once in a while. Uh, oh, you have no idea. Oh, I do. I, what do you mean? I have no idea. I've lived with you for twenty three years. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> but but yeah, but, but yeah, like it, it would take like you could even take like no the, <laughs> the tiniest little negative thing to happen would and, and just push you like, over the edge. Push me over the edge. Yeah. You are doing much, much better now. Yes. And I think it's obvious for everybody in your life. They can see that. And and look, we did, did you do your best with, with, with all the net? Yes. Was it, was your best probably not enough? No. <laughs> but I think what matters is we did the best we could with what we had yes. at the time. It was tough. It, it was tough. It was tough for all of us. And, it really was. And I am glad that it that the whole 
me getting angry over video games has become a little bit more clear to you. Yeah. Well, uh, it makes more. It, it makes more yeah, sense. It makes more sense. It makes more sense. I'd rather take my anger out on video games than I would my own family. That, that was a constructive outlet for you. It was a constructive yeah. outlet. It was. It was basically redirecting my negative feelings to something that didn't matter. Correct. To something that did matter was my family. Yeah. Makes perfect sense, man. That's actually that's that's kind of very impressed that you you thought about it like that. That's that's really cool. Yeah. Cause like for all the times you have you guys have driven me mental, it has not it never changed the fact that you guys are my family. Mm-hmm. I love you guys to death. And if push comes to shove, I would literally die for your sake. That's no, I would do the same for any of you. I, I know, but and like, I just cannot forgive myself in the moment if I would hurt any of you. You Whether, never really, you've that, that's never been an issue. Well, still, like, you guys are precious to me. Like yeah. more I, I, precious I than anything I, I own, and if I hurt you, whether and intentionally or not, if mm-hmm. you just like come the crossfire of me having a bit of one of my moments, moments, <laughs> yeah. I would hate myself more than I ever could have in the moment. I, I get it. I, I get it, and I think I think you have always been very careful not to allow what you were experiencing or what you were going through to physically impact somebody else. Mm -hmm. And, and that's always been, you know, we made that kind of the Hulk reference a little bit ago. It's Mm -hmm. kind of a joke, but it's true. I mean, with as much anger and frustration as you had pent up, you managed it very well. Honestly. Yeah. You know, and in hindsight, when you, when we look back and we realize just exactly what you were going through, you handled yourself very, very well. Look, was my was my outlet with the with the video games perfect? No, it wasn't. But it, it sh- worked. It, it sure as heck was better than me yeah. taking all my anger out on you guys. Yeah, I think that was it. It, it, it did cause some tension and frustration here and there, but I think that's a better trade off than someone getting physically hurt yeah i agree with you so okay well thank you for sharing all of that i yeah. i hadn't planned on having that conversation but we can we can put that in the win column because i think uh it's got to feel good to speak your truth mm-hmm. and and kind of even look back on some of those challenges just to see how far you've come it's amazing I'm very proud of you. Yeah. You should be very proud of yourself. I know you are, but you, you know, you, mm-hmm. you are doing really, really well. And it's better to tell your truth mm-hmm. than tell a lie, like make it out like it was just, it wasn't as bad as it was. It was bad. Yeah. It was bad. But it's better now? It's It's better now. Good. It's so much better now. Okay, so so the overall message from this mm-hmm. is that if you're going through something especially if you're having thoughts of hurting yourself yeah talk about it talk about it talk about it don't talk be afraid it. you know whether it's your parents or a friend mm-hmm. or a counselor or a teacher yeah talk uh, about it talk about it talk about it do not suffer in silence yeah okay and i had to do that i had to do that too this year because when i went yeah. through that really bad this time last year a year ago today i this month i started really I kind of hit a wall and I really started to experience what ended up being probably the worst bout of burnout that I've ever hit. And I had some really dark thoughts and I I was in a really, really bad place and I didn't tell anybody about how bad it was until I couldn't hide it anymore. And I have found that talking about it openly has really helped me to get the support that I needed and, and to better manage some of those feelings. So I totally agree with you. It's not easy, but you got to do it. And look, about that burnout from last year, 
look, it doesn't take a genius to, to see just how horrible of a shape you were in, mentally, physically, and emotionally. And as someone who went through that for a decade, I could really see that you were struggling. You know? But, and one of the reasons why I'm telling you this now Mm -hmm. and why I didn't try to intervene with it is because for as horrible as the infamous decade was for me, one thing I learned from it is that there are just some situations we just have to let someone find their way through it, find their solution. Okay. I mean, you can try and help them, but when you're dealing with the kind of thing that you were going through that this time last year, I found it just better just have them find their way through it. Okay. Imagine I'm I I, I I we don't have to go any yeah. I, I get I get it. Um Yeah, and but I I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Um but you were still very supportive because you helped around the house and did all kinds of things that kind of freed up. You mm-hmm. didn't just ignore it. It no. was you didn't like come out and like try and make me talk about it. I think no. that's what you're saying. You were supportive kind of on the back end yes. by trying to make things around the house run a little bit more smoothly by mm-hmm. making sure things were done or helping out with chores and stuff yes. like that. So just so that we're clear, you you don't mean like pretend like it's not happening. No. You just mean don't make someone talk. If they're not can, if they're can, not in a position to talk but about But you can it. still support them in other ways. I can I could that doesn't mean I couldn't support you in other ways. Like okay. you said I, I just wanted to be clear about yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. And, so yeah. so I think it's great advice. And before we close this off, because this is what I was hoping to do, <laughs> was let's just talk about what 2024 is going to look like. And let's be kind of quick about it because yeah. we don't have yeah. a lot of time. So what is your main goal in 2024? To move the frick out of here. <laughs> to move the frick out of here. To move out of here. And I think that 2024 is a year that you're going to do that. Yes. Do you know what you want that to look like? Do you know what I mean? No. Like, where do you want to live? I want to live in a group home. Why Could, do you want to live in a group home? Someone asked me that today. Yeah. Why does he want to, why did you choose that? Because, um, I have memory problems, so I forget stuff kind of easily. I'm easily distracted. And so there's no way in heck that I'm going to be able to completely live on my own. Mm-hmm. Like if by myself, just me, myself and I 24 seven. And I, have I don't to, know that I agree with that. Well, I think I think that you could. I I could, but it's like, but right now, like getting started, right, maybe we we. Well, no, like, well, yeah, kind of just getting started. Yeah, a group home is just like safest bit, not just for myself, but mm-hmm. you can live with friends. I can live with friends, uh, and just like, you know, I. There's no other place I'd rather live as my first home outside of home. Here, yeah. Uh, be with other people. Like your own age? Yeah. So you can hang out age. with? I can hang out with. You talked about movie nights. Movie nights. Stuff like that. Come uh, from work and hang out with your buddies. Y- yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm planning on getting like a PS5 mm-hmm. uh, and an actual... And like the new Nintendo system that's going to be mm-hmm. uh, revealed probably sometime next year, mm-hmm. uh, so we can like have a few game nights. Yeah, we could play games together, you know, and just like, like I could, I could order like a pizza or something, or just mm-hmm. do it as some, and just like, just have some people to spend time with. Yeah, when I get home from work, and you know, maybe that's where you are for the long term or maybe you do that for a while and you're like you know what I think I would like to live on my own and then be able to have people come over and hang out yeah. but then have them leave when they're done yeah. so that I can have my own space we'll just see what it looks like whatever whatever it is that you want we'll, we'll figure out yeah and like 
And that, and that's a that's a big goal for mm-hmm. me. But another big goal of mine, and this is going to be a bit more of a a search and hail miss kind of mm-hmm. goal, but is to find a relationship like romantic kind of relationship. Really, it's a goal that I don't know if I'm going to prioritize. Like, really, in the first half. Gavin Alexander, really. Look, socially, I I, I'm I not, get it. I get it. <laughs> I'm not completely there yet. Okay. But I have made some big leaps and bounds this year through Excel okay. and through my job mm-hmm. to, f- to the point where I feel like I'm slowly but surely gaining the resources to... Go for something like that. Gavin. Wow. Isn't that was not on my bingo card. It, it's not gonna that be That was not the, on my twenty twenty four bingo card. Gavin. <laughs> it was, it's not gonna be the first half Look of out, the, ladies. It's not gonna be the first half of the year. I can tell you that. Yeah. It, it's probably gonna be somewhere probably in like well the middle of the year it, to the second half. Yeah. We, well, I mean, like if you're talking about a relationship, you can't always plan when something like that is gonna I, happen. I know. But you're you're my let me let me see if I can understand this correctly. You you want to continue building up your life, yes, and getting yourself into a place where you are emotionally ready, mm-hmm. and you have the resources to to seek out or like put yourself out on the market. <laughs> more right. or less, more or less. Wow, wow, Gavin. <sighs> And you waited until like the very end to drop that bomb. <laughs> wow. All right. I, I saved the best for last. Yeah, you did. I saved the best for Well, last. and I think what we can do to help with something like that mm-hmm. is, you know, I, I think that's a therapy thing too, to kind of help learn how to navigate some of those things. Yeah. And I think that there are resources out there that help, mm-hmm. uh, you know, people who are, who are navigating some of these things to better understand. And yeah and and manage some of those social situations so i think that's totally that's awesome that is awesome and the reason why i said that i'm socially i'm not completely there yet is because i still have a struggle mission of use missing a few social cues you know you you do struggle to read the room I, I do struggle to read the room so that's something that we can still work on that, that is something we, we can but, definitely but still. you don't have to be perfect gavin no one's I know. perfect i know I, I, it's more of just me not trying to create unsafe problems for myself. Yeah, I get that, you. that more like that. Well, relationships can be complicated. They are, they and can. and you just you feel like you need a little more practice before you take on something like yeah. that. Yeah, my skills need totally a little res- bit more time in the oven. <laughs> they're they're still a little underbaked. Okay, all right. Well, on that note, uh. I, we're, we're going to finish this conversation off the air, but uh, that was awesome. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. I'm very proud of you. Mm-hmm. I, I can see in your face. You're very proud of yourself. Um, who who you're, wouldn't be proud? You're destined for big and amazing things, Gavin. You're crushing it. You're doing awesome. And 2024 is going to be a year of big change. Big change. Big change. And uh, huge changes. Yeah. So, we're going to be uh, winding down season six and and then we'll be working on season seven after the first of the year. But we wanted to have one final kind of send off with mm-hmm. each of you. So I'm going to be talking to Elliot and Emmett mm-hmm. and then I'll probably end the season talking with Kelly and we're just going to focus on things like this and talk about what we want and hope for and, and whatever. And I think you set this off uh, perfectly. So we hope that you guys have a fantastic rest of your year and a safe and happy new year. Yes. Mm-hmm. Did you have oh. anything else quickly? <laughs> uh, Sir talks. I hope everyone has a wonderful Christmas or whatever holiday you celebrate. Or whatever holiday you celebrate, whether it's Hanukkah or Someone else that's on the top of my head, but I can't remember what it is. <laughs> um, 
But just in general, hope you all have a Merry Christmas or whatever so holiday you celebrate. Yep. And a Happy New Year. All right. We will talk soon. Yep. Before I let you go, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to tune in today. It means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. And, you know, I put a lot of time and energy into each one of these episodes because I want there to be a resource for you that wasn't available for me when I was going through this with my kids. And, you know, I I want there to be a positive impact on your lives. I want you to be able to learn something and enjoy what you're hearing. So uh, thank you again. I really appreciate it. For more information, you can visit theautismdad.com. You can subscribe on any one of your favorite podcast listening apps. And uh, I will talk to you next week. Thank you. Bye.